Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Um, recently I finished my fall 2020 semester and now I want to review some courses. In fall 2020, I took BBB 109 with Julia McLean and today I want to review her course. I want to give a summary of the course structure. I want to talk a little bit about the difficulty slash the workload of the course. I want to talk about the quality of the course and I want to give some general tips on how to do well in the course. My hope is that this will give you a little more insight into BBB 109 and just give you more of an idea of what to expect when you get there. So without further ado, I'm gonna get right into the video. So BBB 109 is Introduction to Brain and Behavior. This is the first course for the neuroscience major at Penn. And this is a course that you have to take if you're a neuroscience major. This course also fulfills sector five, which is living world. But also remember that if you're using this as a major requirement, you can't put it towards your sector requirement. I made a whole video about pin academics if you wanna understand more about why that is. So link here. So before I start talking about the class structure, I wanna just note that I did take this course online. So a few things may be different, but for the most part, the course is pretty much the same. So BBB 109 is made up of a lecture component, a lab component, and an ungraded recitation. Um, Professor McLean also held weekly review sessions on Mondays where she would have a PowerPoint ready and go over some of the stuff that we went over that week. And she also would just allow us to ask any questions and get any clarity on whatever we didn't understand from the prior week. So I'm gonna give like a basic idea of like what we did on a weekly basis. So basically every week we had two one hour long lectures that we had to watch. And along with this, we had weekly problem sets that we looked at. And these problem sets were just kind of general questions on what we had done the week before. Um, they were kind of good exam questions. And I'm gonna put like an example or two right here. So you can get an idea of what we went over, but these are the problem sets. They were graded for completion. So you didn't have to get every single one right, but it really helped to slow down and understand what was going on the prior week. We also had weekly quizzes on Canvas that were usually about five questions. Um, here's an example of some of those. These are very good exam style questions and a few of these actually ended up being on our exam with like one or two words flipped. Every week we also had to make a weekly discussion post on our Canvas site. And these discussion posts could be anything that you wanted that related to the topic. Um, a lot of students took this as a good time to ask students about the things that we were doing in class. So if someone was confused, they may be like, hey guys, I don't understand um, the difference between an inactivated sodium channel and a closed sodium channel in action potential. And um, someone would just hop on and kind of answer the question and explain a little bit more. A lot of times my discussion posts were just me saying that something was interesting or that I remember learning something in high school and I'm happy that we went a little bit more in depth into it. So they can be whatever you want. And again, they were graded on completion, so. So the content of this course was split into three distinct parts with their own corresponding exam. The first part was language of neurons, where we learned a lot about synaptic transmission, the basics of action potential, learned about the basics of neuron and glia, and just all the basics that we need to know to learn um, the functions later in the class. I know personally, I took AP Psychology and IB Psychology in high school, and a lot of this stuff in the first part of the course was familiar to me. Um, I remember learning about stuff like action potential and synaptic transmission and just the small stuff. So if you have taken those courses, this part of the course might be a little bit easier for you. Either way, it's really important to understand that this is a very cumulative course. This part of the course is the whole basis for the second part of the course which is the whole basis for the third part of the course. So you have to do well in this first part in order to do well in the rest of the course. If you don't do that well in the first part, it's gonna be kind of difficult to understand what's going on throughout the rest of the course. So just wanna note that. So the second part of the course is sensory and motor systems where we learn about like our visual system, auditory system, vestibular system. Um, we learn about muscle spindles and how we understand where our arm is without having to have our eyes open, stuff like that. And we learn about the motor systems with our spinal cord and all the different tracks that are going on for us to sense. The third part of the course was higher level cognition, where we took everything from the first and second and just went a level up and we start seeing how all of the things that we learned about accumulate into one huge system. So 
We go over like stuff like our sleep cycles. We go over like leptin levels in the blood and how that affects our feeding and just a lot of higher level cognition. But again, it's very important for you to understand that this course is so cumulative. And if you don't understand what's going on in the second and first part of the course, you're not gonna understand what's going on in the third part. So yeah, along with that, there was a lab portion of the course. Um, since ours was virtual, I think things were a lot different, but basically we would have like simulations or we would watch professors do dissections and we would just do little worksheets and stuff with that. There was only one real graded thing for our lab, which was our one lab quiz. Um, basically, it was just an anatomy quiz on the brain after we watched the professor dissect the brain. So yeah, it really sucks because this was supposed to be my time to like get in there and like dissect the brain and all. I know I went to like Camp Neuro one time when I was in ninth grade and I got to hold a brain and I watched someone dissect it. But like in this class, in person, you actually get to dissect your own brain, which is pretty cool. So I'm sad that we missed out on that, but yeah. Okay. So here is how our course was graded. As you can see, it's only accounting for two of the midterms because our lowest midterm is actually dropped. And that's another reason why you should do very well on your first exam, because that's the exam that everyone does kind of good on. So you really want to get your points early in this class because it kind of gets harder throughout. That's about 50% of our grade. Next 30% is the final exam. Nothing really new about that. And then the rest of our grade are small 5% increments, which are five. And the rest of our grade are just small 5% increments and half of it is graded on completion, the discussion posts and the problem sets. So you really have to worry about just the quizzes and the lab quiz at that point. So now I'm gonna shift gears and talk more about the difficulty of the class. This class isn't particularly difficult as long as you're like involved in the class. Um, this definitely isn't something you should be scared of like organic chemistry or other really hard like computer science classes that I've heard of, but like this is definitely a class you wanna stay on top of and watch out for. There are like very complex processes in this course and there's very small and minute details that you have to understand in order to get the questions right on exams. So even if you really understand things generally, you have to go that next level in this course. And I think that's what makes it hard. Um, also the fact that there's just kind of a lot of work in this class sometimes. I did go over like what we did in a general week and it kind of, it's kind of a lot sometimes. Like it feels like a lot to always have a problem set and a quiz and a discussion post, it kind of, it's kind of a lot sometimes. Um, there's just a lot going on with this course and you really gotta stay on top of it is what I'm saying. It shouldn't be a course where there's anything that you won't be able to understand like generally, but being able to understand all the small details in the background is gonna be the difficult part of this course. I probably give it like an eight out of 10 on difficulty because of these reasons. Now I wanna switch gears and talk about the quality of the course. So this was an extremely like quality course, like I liked it a lot. And the huge part of that is Professor McLean. She loves the whole neuroscience topic and I can tell that through the way that this course is ran. This course is a very like organized course and there's not any, there wasn't any time that I really had questions whereas other courses I do. And I don't mean questions on the content, I mean like on whether we're gonna have a quiz or not. Like I've had plenty of classes where uh, my professor may be like, I haven't made the exam yet. So instead of Tuesday, we're gonna have it Thursday or I haven't made the quiz yet or something popped up, um, something like that. I, there was never a moment in this course where I had one of those moments. So I really commend her for that because that takes a lot of stress off of the students and allows us to just think about the content instead of having to worry about whether something's due later or earlier now. There's nothing like that. Um, we never had to like switch the due dates of anything because everything was spaced out properly and everything was constant. Um, she even actually planned in dates for us to have breaks. So we had a week where we literally didn't have class. There were weeks where we didn't have quizzes and they were all planned and scheduled and nothing ever felt last minute in this course. And that's like a really big thing for me because I mean, I like things to be really scheduled and constant. And that's not even focusing on the part that she's extremely good at answering any questions that we had. 
Um, there was never a time where I really felt like she wasn't getting the question that we were asking. And also the quality of this course is really, really good because of the amazing TAs in this course. The TAs in this course, a lot of them are like grad students, PhD candidates, um, going to med school. They know what they're talking about. It's not an undergraduate student who's just getting paid to be a TA on the side. Like these, I mean, they're still getting paid for it and all, but like they're PhD candidates. They know what they're talking about. Like I trust everything that they're saying, so. Okay, so final thoughts and tips to succeed. So I really enjoyed this course and I think that you're gonna like it too. As I said, it's a little bit of work. Like it's not like a walk in the park type thing, but you'll learn to like the course, especially if you like neuroscience. <laughs> Professor McLean, her preview sessions and all, like with that help, also the TAs are extremely helpful. You should be able to get through this course pretty good. So my main tip to succeed will be to really slow down and do well on the first exam because that's what most students do. Like most students perform well on the first exam and a little bit worse on the second, a little bit worse on the third. So it's really good to do well on the first one so you can be in a position where if you do maybe bomb one of the exams, it's not the end of the world anymore. Also, although Professor McLean and the TAs are great, also get online and find some good resources because there are some really nice resources on the internet for courses like these. I know one of the websites that I found that I really like is RonnieLee.com. Um, Ronnie Lee, he's a Brown alumni and he was a TA for their introductory neuroscience course. And he makes really good content on YouTube about, he makes small videos about some of the topics that we went over that I used. He has a lot of study guides and practice exams on his website. So I'm gonna link RonnieLee.com in the description. Go there, um, you should find some pretty good study stuff in there. Um, also, there's Neuroscientifically Explained. Um, you might have seen that before with the whole like two minute neuroscience videos, but go to their website. They have really good articles on stuff and obviously they have really good YouTube videos on neuroscience topics. They really help me a lot. I would also say having a lot of summary sheets for a lot of the processes is a really big thing because it makes it a lot easier to study when you have processes separated out of your notes. Before doing this, I would have to like flip through all my notes in order to get to the process that I needed and that got annoying. So making separate documents with just the processes makes it a lot easier to study because you don't have to flip through all your notes to get to that one specific part of the note that you need. But yeah, that's all I have today. Hopefully this video helps you and hopefully you can perform well in BBB 109. In spring 2021, I plan on going back on campus and I'm hoping to make for more videos like this but more like warden, engineering, nursing. So if there's any classes that you'd like to see reviewed before you take them, or if you're a PIN student and you would like to do a PIN course review, please let me know on Instagram and I'll try to make it happen. With that, thank you for watching and have a good day.